both on your commercial computations like e-commerce uh, and also scientific computations um, and lot of uh, you know data analytics etc we use floating point extensively right in all media applications for example there is a need for using floating point in a big way so that when we use floating point as such i told you that this is not an infinite arithmetic space when i look at systems we have limitations we can't represent beyond something that's a range right if you take two's complement arithmetic with n bits you can you can only uh, 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 you know the range is minus 2 power n minus 1 2 plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 we can't go beyond that range so because of this finite representation what are the problems that you will land in if you had just looked at uh, you know integer arithmetic the problems are very simple uh, uh, so if the range if i give you n bits and the range is between minus 2 power n minus 1 to plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 either you will go above that range or below that range so underflow and overflow were the two things that you saw in uh, integer arithmetic but when we go to floating point the thing becomes much little more complex so let us understand that with a set of very nice examples so these slides are made by professor shankar balachandran he is with intel now but um, so i am just borrowing that slides some excellent slides and uh, uh, we'll try and understand uh, especially what is the difference between things like what is precision what is accuracy those things become very very important when we look at uh, floating points uh, arithmetic okay so it's a very very crucial aspect of this course and i hope uh, we will learn that in the proper perspective i'll teach and you will learn in the proper perspective so these are the references for this so hennessy and patterson's book on computer organization ieee 754 standard then some uh, web pages and wikipedia now let us uh, start the lecture with what do we understand by the term accuracy what did we understand by the term precision accuracy and precision are two very important uh, engineering metrics what is accuracy how close is the measured value to the true value that's what we mean, mean by accuracy what do we mean by precision we keep doing an experiment repeatedly how close are the results right if i experiment so if my results are repeat if i repeat the experiments and i get almost the same result then i say my arithmetic is precise right so accuracy means how close is the measured value to the actual true value precision is how close do repeated experiments yield similar results right so this is the difference between accuracy and precision so we need both accuracy and precision because if i run a program say n times every time i want the same answer i don't want different answer and i run a program in machine one and i run it in another machine two i need to have the same answer correct so that's what i mean by a precise computing environment and the answer that this computer generates or whatever whichever computer generates how close it is to the actual value that is called accuracy right are you able to distinguish between these two now so there are four uh, co combinations of results possible i will have an accurate result and a precise result i will have an accurate result but imprecise result i could have an inaccurate result but precise inaccurate and imprecise okay so all four combinations are possible now how so so on i we will now see some experiments right i will put those experiments here you can go and check it out very very simple programs now you can check it out on your real system you can write those c programs and uh, compile and execute and see for yourself how each of these four combinations are possible in floating point arithmetic and what sort of care we need to take right are you getting this okay there is a difference between a precise accurate fellow and a precise fellow let, let us be sh sh shooting darts on that target right now what do you see on the left hand side it's an accurate hit almost accurate hit on all grounds like we were very close to that whatever that middle red uh, circle but it is imprecise different times i hit the, the the dots are far off from each other but on the other hand when you see on the right hand side it is inaccurate we we never uh, the dots never reach the 
center circle but precise okay right so so th this you should have it in mind i'll i'll give several analogies like that as we proceed so where you should understand what is accuracy and what is precision okay and uh, especially uh, when you start doing uh, you know these are some things which okay now let us look at floating point representation right so um, before going to that let, uh, what can we do with n bits if it is uh, unsigned uh, so if it is uh, unsigned so i can represent anything from 0 to 2 power n minus 1 if it is 2's complement it is minus 2 power n minus 1 to 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 just one's complement i can do minus 2 power n minus 1 plus 1 to 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 so these things we have seen um, in your digital course and of course in your cs100 but when you want to represent large numbers say for example very big one or very very small numbers or rationals irrationals transcendentals like pi e right then we need a different representation and that is why and that representation is very crucial because it uh, there needs to be some standard there are we can come out with infinite ways of trying to represent these numbers so there there was a need for getting a standard and that's why the ieee 754 standard came into place and we started off from that okay now what we will now uh, discuss is about the ieee 754 standard now this is overall the ieee 754 standard um, so I want to. What is this number? Six point zero two into ten power twenty-three. Right? Ah, uh, this is Avogadro number. Okay. So what we need here, we need uh, a sign, a magnitude, then a mantissa, a decimal point, then exponent, and then uh, a radix and a base for a exponent. Right. So I need. A, um, so I have an exponent. I have a whatever fraction there, and then I need a sign bit. So, so for example, this uh, six point zero two three into ten power twenty three can be written as point six zero two three into ten power twenty four with a plus sign. Right. Similarly, your 1.673 into 10 power minus 7, 24 can be written as 0 0.1673 to the power minus 23 and a sign here plus n. Okay. So there is an exponent, there is a mantissa or whatever the fraction and then a sign. Bit. Okay. This is the basic representation here. But we want to make this you know look. So I could have, I, see why I say there are infinite ways of representing this. I can represent it as 0 0.6023 into 10 power 24 or I could have even represent it as 6.023 into 10 power 23 or I could put 23 here, I could put 60.23 and put uh, you know 22 here and so on right or I could put 0 0.062023 into 10 power 25 right. So I have different ways of representing this okay. So, so I need to have some standard. If two two computers start representing in two different ways, what will happen is your program can never be portable across systems. So if I write a program for say some in, uh, Intel machine, then I can't use it in say IBM machine. If I use run for IBM machine, I can't use it in so, uh, Sun Sun Spark machine or DEC machine, right? So I need to have a common floating point representation so that I could use it. I can port my programs. So I, so you sell e-commerce programs, you sell e-commerce software, you sell, you know, um, uh, engineering computation softwares like MATLAB, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So we need, we can't write different uh, software for different architectures. Right? We need to write one architecture and compile it for different machines. So that's why this standard has come up. Right? Now this is the IEEE 754 uh, floating point uh, format, where there is one sign bit. This is a single precision. When you say float x, right? This is this is what you see there. It's a four-byte representation. So 23 bits, 0 to 22. 23 bits are used for m. That is the mantissa. And uh, there are uh, 
23 8 bits are used for the exponent and 1 bit is used for the sign ok. So, it is fine right. If s is actually 0 then it is positive s is minus 1 then it is negative. So, sin bit is very clear if I put 0 there it is a positive number 1 is a negative number. Now, how do we store the exponent? We store the exponent in what we call as the 127 uh, xs 127 format whatever is the exponent you want you add 127 to it and store it right. So, by that we the exponent is always a positive number when it is stored here. So, if I have minus 1 suppose I am I am I want to store say 10 power minus 127 you add 127 to it and store 0 here. So, your exponent value will go from 0 to 2 power 8 to 8 bits now 255 0 to 255 essentially you are storing from minus 127 to plus 127 right plus 128. So, every time you add 127 to it and store it here, right. So, always your exponent is going to be a positive number exponent that is being stored here is a positive number. Though you can store actual representation you can have negative exponents, but since you add 127 it becomes a positive number. And then how do you get the fraction, fraction this is 1s and zeros. So, you make the fraction as 1.1101 or whatever you do not store that 1 you store whatever is after that uh, decimal point. Okay. So, what would be the value of this? So, uh, suppose I am storing s, e and m the value of this is minus 1 power s right. So, if s is 0 then it is 1 if s is plus then f is 1 it is minus into 2 into e minus 127 because you have stored it in xs 127 format into whatever m here 1 point m. So, whenever I get a binary, so I, if I get 0 0.00111, I will store it into say some 2 power 15, I will now make it as 1 point, sorry point 0.110, let me put, I will put make it as 1.011, I am 3 right into 2 power 12, right, you got this and I will store 0 0.011 here. I will store point 0 sorry not point I will store 0 1 1 here and of course 12 plus 127 I will store 139 here and of course I will store 0 here 0 1 1 is some 3 whatever ok. So, 139 in 139 I will store it in binary I will not convert it here. So, when I want to retrieve it it is going to be minus 1 power 0 into 2 power 139 minus 127 12 into this one comes here one point whatever I have zero one, which is nothing but this. Okay, so you're able to appreciate this. So the good thing is that exponent is always positive, and mantissa is normalized. They use the word called normalized. Normalized in the sense that I I this is the this is the unnormalized value I normalization is essentially to bring one one here and one point something. So, to convert your whatever number you have got into the form as one point something else and that something else is stored in m one is not stored. Okay. So, one is implied here ok. Are you able to follow this? Yes. We will come to that. So, m is the mantissa which is the magnitude of the number normalized there is an hidden integer bit integer bit 1 and of course, the actual fraction is 1 point m. So, let us look at this. So, s is 0, s is 0 here, e is 124 and m is 1 point whatever this whole thing. So, when we convert this part this is 0 0.15625 as you see here. So, this whole thing. So, 
So, how do you convert this minus 1 power 0 because into 2 power 124 minus 127 which is minus 3 into 1.01 whatever. This is 2 power minus 3 into 1 point if it convert 0 1 from binary to decimal it is 1.25. So, 1.25 divided by 8 because 2 power minus 3 is 8. So, this is 0 0.1562 right. So, this is how 0.15625 will be represented. Right? So, you have a 23 bit mantissa, 8 bit exponent and a sign. Okay? Now, again, so this is again a negative number minus 1 power 1 and E is 133. So, this is 2 power 6 and this 0 0.1101 whatever is so 1 point this. So, this is now currently minus 1110 whatever you see here into 2 power 6 right I just bring it here when you convert this this is minus 118.625 okay just a positive number with a positive exponent negative number with a negative exponent decimal. So, I am just giving you two examples very straightforward to look at okay. So, single precision I can I can represent numbers like this right but when I want something like this, right? So, when I want something as big as this, right? A single precision, I can represent numbers like this. But if I want to have, uh, you know, bigger numbers, right? As you see here, then we go in for a double precision. So, how does the double precision work? It is 64 bits, that is 8 bytes. Same, same funda, no, no change here, but except that this is 11 bit exponent, 52 bit fraction and 1 sign bit. So, with 11 bits what we can do? We do an excess 1023 like, like what we did for excess 127, we can do an excess 1023 right. So, that means we could have a very big range here okay. So, uh, interestingly this is the minimum number and maximum number that could be represented right uh, in not just minimum and plus or minus 1.175 into 10 power minus 38 to plus or minus 3.4 into 10 power 38 this is the range right there is a plus or minus here there is a plus or minus here and this is the uh, thing. So, this is binary converted to decimal for a single precision similarly when you go for double precision this is this is minus minus 308 okay so this is the range in which we can represent okay yeah so so please note that uh, my range uh, comes at most 9 times in my exponent right when i go from single to double i increment it by 9 times almo almost 9 times uh, yeah 8 times right almost 8 times my exponent can increase 38 to 308 and minus 38 to minus 300 okay right. so this is how floating and uh, floating single single precision and double precision are actually represented okay fair enough are you able to follow right now these are some special values like you asked how is 0 represented your exponent is 0 your uh, your mantissa is 0 then the value is 0 1 how do you represent your exponent is this and your uh, mantissa is 0 okay so these two and there are numbers which we cannot uh, basically normalize at all it is so small right so it is called small denormalized numbers. So these are all some large denormalized, de, de, de the smallest and the largest, uh, right? Where I just can put one one here. Largest is all ones. So if an exponent is zero, sort of this becomes a denormalized number. A largest normalized number is of course this. Smallest normalized number is this. You can you can represent infinity as this, and if this is non-zero, then this is not a number. Meaning, 
I can't, I can't represent it is out of this range. Okay. So, these are some special values that we need to keep in mind because there are some numbers which we cannot normalize because your exponent becomes much smaller than that. So, those numbers we just we put the exponent as 0 and put that number here. So, these are all this is the smallest denormalized number and this is the largest denormalized number. I can't express it as 1 point something into 2 power this because it exceeds it, it is outside that 0 to 255 limit in your ex, even in your excess form either below or above right and similarly okay so this is the largest normalized number and smallest normalized number then I have a representation for infinity and a and something which I cannot represent even deemed normalized I cannot do then I call it as a not a number right. Many times when you start doing floating co point computation you will get NAN what is NAN right this is this is something that I cannot represent in this representation right. So, this this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this is for single precision of course the same can be extended for double precision but you should understand that when I interpret a floating point value, if I interpret those 4 bytes, that interpretation is not very straightforward. There are, uh, of course, if you have a non zero exponent and a non zero significant, it is not just if I is except these, these uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 combinations that you are seeing here. Other than that, that interpretation is what I have told in the previous slide, but these 6 combinations you should be very clear, okay. So, this is this is extremely important. These are some steps we need to keep in mind when we start looking at floating point representation. So, now with representation itself we had these type of issues, when we start computing using floating point then we need to be much more careful. Now, let us take this right. We need to be very careful in the sense what sort of accuracy and precision and range I need right. I need a bigger range or a small range. So, what sort of accuracy and precision I need there. So, so I have to go and pick one of the decision I need to take is whether should I have a single precision or a double precision and that is also very crucial. And when I scan and print floating point values, what is actually there in the memory will not come out because your printf and scanf also does some jugglery with your floating point when it is printing it. That also you should be aware, right. Printf when it wants to print your thing, it does some rounding, it does some truncation, okay. Even your scanning, scanning, so your scanf and printf in your C. We should be bothered about the ranges and accuracy and precision. And based on that, we should uh, select what we want to do, and the results that you get, right? The results you get, you can't just rely on printf and scanf for the results, right? The you may your your uh, computation can be accurate, but the way it prints it can be different. Okay, so we'll see some very interesting examples. So we'll see all these gochas now. Okay. So, first one thing if I have 32 bits I can represent 2 power 32 values. So, how many floating point numbers are really there? Uncountable right this is the Cant Cantor's argument right if you have studied that it is fine if you have not it is uncountable because between 0 and 1, between 0 and 0 0.1, between 0 and 0 0.01 then I can keep on right I could have infinite number of floating point values a real line real number line is really a continuous line integer line is uh, a discrete line in sense. So, but our representation is finite in size. So, I have been repeating this, I will repeat it because I believe 7 times if I repeat once it will get into your mind. Okay. So, now please note that the problem is here that I have infinite numbers, infinite floating point numbers, but I have only finite size to represent it and because of that what are the things that are going to happen. Let us see some examples. What do you expect here? I start with say a equal to 1, it is a long, i i is a long number that is ok, fine, int, this is a single precision, int. for i, i I repeat it 100 times 
and every time I am going to subtract 0 0.01 from this. So, what is the answer you will? You should get 0, right? Note that your expected output is 0, but actually a printed output will be 0 0.00001. But the actual value that will be stored in your memory is some 6.591 into 10 power minus 7, right. So, you can, how do you see? You take this A, okay. So, this you can just print. This mathematically you calculate, this is what you print, you will get it. If you use GCC, you will get something, something very close to this. But how will you find this? Huh? Multiplier. No, no, no. What you do is you cast uh, A as a character pointer, right? And print those four bytes of A. And actually find out how what characters are there, that ASCII character, ASCII values, right? Right? You can cast it as character and print that four characters starting from that point. Right? You can you can give a pointer and increment the pointer and uh, print the contents and from there you calculate exactly what it is. You will find out that this is the value that is stored in the system. So, first thing is mathematically it is incorrect, incorrect and what the computer actually computes this printf does not print that, it is printing something else also. So, the printf itself has something to go and massage it and give you some answer. So, what you see as a printout as an answer is not actually what is stored in the memory and it is not the actual mathematically what is stored in the memory is not the correct answer. Right? You see there are two levels of inconsistencies that creep in. Imagine that I take this answer, I put it into a file and some other, some other time later somebody takes this answer and do further floating point computation already you have got a erroneous result and that error still creeps up and becomes a bigger error, correct. So, this is something, I do not know, did you learn this in your CS 100? Was this taught? Yes? Oh, good. Okay. So, there yeah, are a lot of redundancy, but still I will continue. <laughs> okay. Now, <coughs> so the error actually crept in uh, while we were subtracting right so so why because some of the intermediate values were not able to be represented faithfully right exactly and then the error uh, propagates but why uh, the print statement printed it as point not 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 one because the printing actually rounds it off so it says as you see here you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so, this 0 0.06 actually became 1. So, printf actually rounds the value. So, these are, yeah. So, what do you mean by the intermediate values? Like um, point not 0.01, right? 1 minus point not 0.01 is point not, uh, point 0.99, point 0.98, right? When I want to represent point 0.99, it will not be exactly point 0.99 because of your finite arithmetic. But in our example, the point 0.99 can be like faithfully represented. Faithfully it can't be. It will be some point 0.9, 9, 9, zero, zero. something, okay. something. Zero, right? No, no, no. It is in binary, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I do not have a decimal. Okay. okay. Binary it will, yeah. Just try it out. Now, let us see what will happen here. So, I am subtracting from A equal to 1 and I am subtracting it 100 times and adding 1. So, the answer should be again 1. So, the expected output is 1. Now, you want to say 1, we will say 1 plus delta. Okay. So, actually the printed output is 1 because you expected 1 plus delta, but actually it comes 1, it becomes accurate and the actual value stored is also 1. Okay. So, two negatives make a positive. So, the error in subtraction got compensated by the error in addition. Okay. So, sometimes errors hide each other. So, they complement each other. Okay. Error creeps in during addition now as it was in subtraction. Error propagates as before, but one error cancels the other. 
but why printed as 1 because now it is printing it faithfully okay. right. So, please understand these are all the issues that we land up when we start doing these type of floating point computations. So, I will give you a simple exercise let us repeat this uh, previous experiment with uh, subtractions of 10 we did it with 10 power minus 2 right minus 0 0.01 do it 1000 times with 10 power minus 3 uh, 10 power minus 4 10,000 times and 100,000 times with this and correspondingly have uh, the loop should be 10 power 3 10 power 4 and 10 power 5. But actually you will see that the actual value that will be there the actual value that will be there would be uh, you know in the system what will be printed is this um, uh, for the first experiment that is just subtraction. Subtraction plus addition is always the error gets cancelled. Okay. Right. So, please see that smaller the value that is subtracted more the error right that is also very important. So, when I st so, this is becoming 10 power minus 3 this the error was 10 power minus 6 here it became 10 power minus 3 here the error was 0 0.00009 which is now become 0 0.09478. So, some orders of magnitude the error has crept in. So, smaller that I am going to subtract 1 minus 0 0.00001 then then smaller the thing I subtract more the error right are you able to see this and that error is growing exponentially. So, here it was in the 7th place 1, 2, 3, 4, 6th place let us say 10 power minus 6 here it became 10 power minus 5 here it became 10 power minus 4 10 power minus 3 every time it is getting multiplied by 10. So, the error also basically grows exponentially and the values are faithfully restored in every single case because that means what? when I subtract and then I add then it is basically faithfully represented. So, that means the error is systematic right. So, there is something happening wrong in that at, at subtraction exactly the opposite thing happens in the addition to compensate for it. So, does it mean this error is predictable? So, this is some question that we need to answer ok, but just note here that error if I go and become more and more accurate right right I want to become more and more accurate by increasing my uh, you know floating point uh, value if I want to keep decrementing by say uh, 10 power minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 then the amount of error that accumulates becomes exponential it increases exponentially that is something that we need to keep in mind when we do this in spite of all your IEEE 754 standards everything right this is something that we need to very much keep in mind. But what will happen if I do with 10 power minus 8 we have done till 10 power minus 7 interestingly you will find that the printed values 1 after subtraction and 1 after addition also. the very first subtraction and addition has no effect on a right if I go with 10 power minus 8. So, you can try the experiments with a starting at 0 subtract and bring and you will get lot more surprises here ok right are you able to follow this is very interesting. So, let us go and one more minute let us go and redo this with the double then actually we will see actually you will see that the actual value is very very less very close to 0 right it is some 10 power minus 16 right where uh, in the previous case it was 10 power minus 5 or 6 still the answer is erroneous but the, uh, the error is far lesser can still be problematic if if the uh, error is accumulated 10 power 16 times then it actually becomes 1 ok. So, and when we print we also used percentage d here if you carefully see here we have used percentage d g which is which is a double printing. Right? So, it actually prints a uh, wider range ok right in contrast to percentage f right. So, this is what uh, we see when uh, as uh, 10 power minus 3 in double 
and note that here also my error was minus 16 when I started with 10 power minus 3, but if I start decrementing 1 with 10 power minus 8, I am getting an error which is 10 power minus 9, but again here the error as I keep decrementing, I, as I become more and more accurate in my computation, my error actually increases exponentially. This is 10 power minus 16, this is 100 times that, this is again 100 times that, uh, this is again and then it becomes 100 times and then 10 times. So, it starts, you see some uh, exponential growth here, okay. So, the last one, so we will do a new set of experiments like, you know, we start with 0 and uh, do this. What must I be at the end of this loop? Expected output is 100, right? We start with 1 while b is greater than 0, 0.0, do b equal to b minus 0.01, i plus plus. So, the value of i should be 100, but the value of i you get would be 101, right? Because 101 times I need to subtract to actually make it less than 0. If you repeat this with 10 power minus 3, 10 power minus 4, you will actually find that this 1001, 10,000 and so on. This is not going to be 1 million, it is less than a million here, uh, sorry, less than a lakh here. Very quickly it uh, becomes 0. This is less than a million here, 10 million. 10 power minus 8, what would it be? It will be an infinite loop, right, with single precision. Using double precision, now I get much closer to this, right. So, because of floating point, we had all these disasters because of these type of computations. The Patriot missile actually became non unpatriotic, it failed at 1991. There was the time measured was in units of tenth of a second and it went and chopped off at 24 bits. So, for us, the error was 0 0.34 seconds. The scud travels at 1.6 kilometers, so it traveled more than half a kilometer away. So, I want to go and hit something here, it went and hit something later. And Arian rocket Phi, uh, Phi actually launched by ESA in this e European Space Association 1996, exploded 40 seconds after liftoff because a 64 bit float assigned to integer and the integer saturated. Okay. This was a 500 dollar, 500 million dollar damage. So, that is why we call these type of errors as a million dollar error. Okay. So, floating point calculations are tricky, you can need to do extensive checks. IEEE 754 also has inherent problems as we have seen this. So, you have to write your own libraries when you do floating point, you should be extremely careful in these experimentations. Okay. Thank you very much.